Yes, how you doing? This is Dr. Chris Lamont, and this is a little chat I'm doing to go along with uh, June blog. Uh, I know there's some confusion, but nonetheless, it's a chat to go with the June blog. We've now made it halfway through the year, right? We've been looking at all kinds of crazy stuff. And last year, 2020, I talked about my idea of having two systems, not particularly a new idea, but most certainly I've just kind of re-looked at it. And why we look at ideas is not to find an essential truth, but to be able to expand a different way to look at things, right? If we have something that we think is true, we only see it a certain way. If we look at it, we get diversity, we have innovation, we have more creativity, right? So that becomes the goal. I, once again, started this year out saying, hey, we've got to anchor into something new to secure into. We're really in a world where we're being influenced and we're influencing, and we really need to be more influencing, right? And that's the whole objective and move in the direction of, of being more open. So we looked at, we bounced around January, February, March, April. We talked about all kinds of stuff <laughs> in May. Uh, so here we are in June, starting to say, okay, at what direction are we going to go? Uh, I'm... I, to make it clear, we've got a nature of influence. One influence that we see is entropy, right? Everything in form deteriorates. Conditions at different places deteriorate differently, right? But nonetheless, everything deteriorates. So everything is under the marshalling influence of, of some sort, right? Uh, some things can change states and preserve longer, some things you know, because we petrified wood can last a longer than a tree. But trees and other stuff in the background that we look out seem to be more consistent than us. Even though everything changes, we start to talk about securing into the background. We're securing into things that don't appear in our lifetime to change very much. Securing just means that we use it as a reference to kind of come back to, secure it into. So that's all, right? Uh, Right now, we're in a time of change where the background pieces are changed. Now, if you like to call it climate change, that's fine. But it's not only climate change, right? Because uh, less than 100 years ago, we were looking for a truth, right? And now it seems like everybody has their story of what the truth is. There's no consensus, right? So that's a process called polarization. So we can't secure into someone's going to tell us the truth. But that's number one. Number two, we used to kind of secure into an expert. We would go find someone with some expertise. But we do know that ever since we got into computers and phones, we, as IQ, as humans, are dumbing down. Now, we're dumbing down because, come on, give me a break. If you had to remember formulas and different things in your head all the time, uh, you then probably could do really good on a test because you use those things every day. If you now rely on your phone, I look at a worker, a guy comes to my house to fix my dryer, he gets his phone out and he punches in numbers and he gets the mapping out. He goes in there, he plugs the phone into my, to my dryer, runs a test on it through his phone, through I don't know where, comes out with a part that's broken, goes on his phone, finds out where he can get it, orders it, says he'll pick it up and be here tomorrow at eight o'clock and he has, puts his schedule into the phone. Everything's in his phone, what does he have in his head? Uh, maybe just a password for the phone. I, I'm not sure. So you start to see, I can understand how in testing, we would look dumber. So I'm not saying we're getting stupid. Matter of fact, why I'm giving you that example is I want you to notice a change is occurring and the way we evaluated who and what we were may not be a good standard anymore, right? That's the whole idea for change. Evolutionary change is changing the whole package, trying to or attempting to, this time is the first time we have one that appears to be fairly global, right? Um, come on. Most of the world of psychology blames that on television, which may be very well true. I've never owned one, so I guess I'm really old fashioned. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. I just still can't find very much value in television. Um, I have more value in coffee. I, I'm not sure that's better for me. I know there's a truth in any of that. Do you get me? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that what we start to look at is influences. Your preference might be an influence or it might not be, right? I mean, I've been drinking coffee all my life because of the fact that 
I'm lactate intolerant. So when I was little, very little, like out of the baby bottle, trying to find something to drink to go to sleep at night, my mother couldn't give me milk because it would upset my stomach. So she felt guilty. So she would make coffee, make it half milk and half coffee, heat it all up so it was warm and give it to me. Or she would take white horse whiskey and mix it with a little milk and heat it up and give it to me. I slept good, worked really good. And she got the milk into me a little bit so she felt better. Uh, that was very sweet because there was an absolute truth piece, you get it? My gosh, kids should have milk, even though I shouldn't have had milk because I couldn't digest it. Something missing in an enzyme or who knows what, right? But anyway, so I drank coffee for eons. This one's got a bug in it, but it's okay. Bugs are good. Uh, drank coffee for a long time and then I quit drinking coffee because I thought maybe it shouldn't. And then I drank tea and I drank distilled water and I drank wine and I drank homemade beer and beers. And, I, and, and then when I opened a center in Southern California, why I got the bug out. When I ordered, when I opened a center in Southern California, I, I, I had a center that we would meet in and do work in, but I really didn't have an office in there per se. So when I would meet someone, I had to meet them somewhere. And not only a few blocks from my center was a Starbucks with a little meeting room. So I would meet people in that Starbucks or we'd have our staff meetings in that Starbucks. So people always remind, always picture me with a cup of Starbucks coffee Right, I do drink a lot of coffee, but in my center, I didn't have coffee. I actually had herbal tea, right? So, so the association was just a, a piece of a convenience. So yes, I'm back to drinking a little more coffee than what I used to, uh, just because I'm kind of a homebody these days, aren't we all? And so it's just like, uh, I can't sit around drinking wine or whiskey all day and still manage to stand up at the end of the day. So. Coffee is a safe bet or that or water, right? Uh, if it gets warm, then I do, you know, club soda and bitters or something, oh, whatever. Uh, so it, this is just, I'm just giving you a normal rundown of how life operates and those are variables. And you start to see how I just built a story fitting all those pieces in and how essential are those? How much are they secured into anything? Not really, not at all. You know, none of that's really important. Where I live and where I get my mail and my bills and donations, uh, all becomes more essential. So background pieces become more essential than our story elements do. Do you, do you see that's, that's essential pieces? All right, so as we move forward, the background's changing, what are we going to do, right? So if we start to look at the logical system, if you don't understand that, go back and look at my blogs from last year and I'll probably do a talk on that. I didn't really want to because it's going to be kind of long-winded, but I try to keep these short. Seems that people like short ones. Uh, but nonetheless, if we look at logical systems, logical systems was when this whole game of planet Earth and form and all that stuff got created. It basically got created by having all potential divided into segments. Even if there's 11 billion segments, one 11th billion of all potential that's pretty big. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure that in a logical system we could work that math. I'm not sure that's potentially possible, but it still would have to be big, right? Bigger than you could imagine, beyond what we could imagine. So we would have then our own little piece of the pie. So division produced it. So therefore, when we work into the elements of logical systems, inherently what we find is division is not of what science has found. We look at something, we find what's oh, made of more parts. And then we tear that apart and we find it's more parts. And then we tear that apart and we find it's more parts. And then we get parts that are unstable, all right? So we know that we can get down to an ionic piece. And then we found out a year or so ago that maybe ionic pieces aren't so stable. And the truth is that particles aren't so stable because they blink in and out. They go back to energy and they come back into particle again. And so this whole thing is, pretty much an illusion of some sort, but we're playing, it's a game, right? So we're engaged, all right. So I've kind of abandoned for now the logical system of being able to find something else to secure into. The background is part of the logical system. We have done that only because it had more duration, right? Probably a habit because 
most of the world, the history of the world, Egypt, Europe, have all anchored into history, right? Because they have tons of artifacts sitting around. They have castles on the hillside and nobody's lived in them for 2000 years, but it's still there. So, so do you, that, that makes sense, right? It's just simply, it's just artifacts. So we have a conversation and we have in the background pieces that make us look at history in Europe and lots of parts of the world, in Turkey, lots of places. I love the Roman runes in Turkey. And I always think of Turkey and think of Roman runes. It's like, it's a little stretch, but most certainly it makes sense historically. Uh, now what we're looking is going forward, what are we gonna do? So I'm just saying that we've gone over things. And if we start to look at the main elements in a creative system, the system that imagined this whole thing, right? Put it all together. Maybe, okay, that's also a story, but trying to put words into a system that doesn't contain logical elements or words is really tough. So we talk about it abstractly. So that's what we're doing. So here we have a logical system uh, that we cannot trust and anchor into because what the parts of it, the older parts we've anchored into in the past is changing. So all those old castles are falling down. Uh, the last trip to Peru was very disappointing because a lot of the stuff that were really cool to see are it, some of it's been destroyed from beer advertisements and some of it's just fallen apart. And uh, yeah, so, and that's the nature of entropy. That's the nature of influence, the nature of change. So what we're saying is let's look at the creative system. In the creative system, we have balance. Balance is an automatic piece. It's just automatic piece. It, it's a demand. In other words, the creative system says, if you're going to imagine this, then you have to imagine all these other things, right? Because it has unlimited range. So we can't imagine something as a bias without imagining the counter. And that's always a state of balance. So it always creates a state of balance. So if you think you've done something wonderful, you may also somewhere have a little naggy thing in the back of your head that said, I think I could have done it better, or someone might beat me, or someone might do better. That's a little competitive edge that we talk about that really comes into human because it's, it's force balancing. That's one element. Other element is range. Ultimately, creative system would provide unlimited range, but we humans don't have unlimited range. We only have this seven plus or minus two in consciousness, but it's not 7%, it's seven points. So it just means how much you look at, right? Um, if I'm looking at a book, I can see how much of the, what? Two page, if I hold the book back, I can see two pages. If I hold it up to my face, I'm probably only reading one page and I have to kind of turn my head when I, right? Like a tennis match, right? We sit in the front row of a tennis match. We can see, we got to move our head back and forth where the ball goes. So if we sit in the back row, we can kind of see the whole thing. If you're watching on TV, piece of cake, they can zoom out. Uh, so you start to understand range has to do with your position, location, and how big the bite is. Potentially, to find balance, it would have to be unlimited, so it could uh, annihilate any opportunity for an imbalance. It would have to then rectify it all. We humans quite do that, so we might have something to work with there. The other thing is relationships. So relationships, because to make all potential available in this type of form, we had to divide it up in streams. So I have one ten billionth of all potential for Chris, which is probably a lot more than I'd ever do in a lifetime or what do people talk about? Whatever they talk about, 400 lifetimes, 100 lifetimes, I don't know, whatever silly story they're telling. It's just big number. It's a big piece. So we could do that, right? So I think the big thing that we need to work with is range. So the rest of this year, I wanna to start to work with range. So we have something to anchor into. I'm starting to look at, or at least starting to reveal to me, reveal to me because I'm starting to imagine different things. So I kind of have some ideas of what direction to go come January next year. There, there's, I'm starting to get a little light at the end of the tunnel, which is kind of nice. I like looking forward. You know? I got in a habit when I had a center to plan things out of your head so that when I chewed on it for a whole year, it all kind of blended together. In other words, it produced a bigger range 
where even though I had to move my head, I could see the things as frames or settings. Right? Does that make sense? So I look over here, I look over there, I can put it together, right? When I go to prune my trees, I might start in the backyard and prune a tree, and then I prune another one, and I prune another one in the front yard. I got seven trees. And when I get all done, I go back over and I go, oh, oh, okay. From pruning, by the time I got to the seventh tree, I'm far more aware of pruning skills because I only do it once or twice a year. And so then I go back and I go the circle again and I actually wind up filling my whole trash container a second time with prunings from the trees, dead branches, so on and so forth, things sticking out, things brushing against the roof, all that kind of stuff we do for maintenance. I, I go through it twice because I develop a range going through it the first time. Second time, it's like, wow, I see things I didn't see the first time. That's expanding range. We're going to be able to get out of a polarization and come to some terms. We're probably gonna to have to expand those ranges out. Not looking for a precise absolute piece, but nice to be somewhere in the middle of it. So you can look in both directions and not with your back against the wall. So that's our goal. That's what we're trying to do. We're gonna start moving in a direction in July. And so this is kind of a turning point. I wanna thank everybody that's kind of stuck with this process so far. They got six more months of looking at what we can do with range and how we're gonna play with one element that we can actually do something with. We really need to do something, right? The nature of potential is imagine us doing something. You get this? So if you sit there and say, I got my schedule booked. I know exactly what I'm gonna do every minute for the next year. Is that wonderful? Well, maybe. Uh, there are things that I do redundantly and there are other things that I do with diversity. You get this? Because we can't do everything with diversity, it's too chaotic. So once again, we secure part of our life into and impart into diversity. Now I'm talking about range, right? Um, if everything we did every day was novel, we woke up in the morning and it was just an adventure all day long, you know, it'd be it'd be great, you know, for Robin Hood or Peter Pan or one of those lifestyles, but we don't particularly like, we humans don't particularly like a life that's all totally adventure because it's risky. It's very risky. So we don't cater to that. And I say that statistically because if it was all random, a coin toss, a coin toss is 50% of the time you win and 50% of the time you lose. We don't have 50% death rate in the world. We, we don't have that randomness. We don't even have the odds with dice. So, so there's not a random element. So we're securing into a background in the past to kind of that's a redundant piece. My house, my trees, my mailbox out front. Those are redundant pieces, it's kind of always there, but not always there, right? Because I've only been here seven years. So 20 years ago, it wasn't there. 30 years ago, it was probably a field. And I have no idea where it'll be 30 years from now. I probably won't be here. So I don't know if I care. Does, does that make any sense? So we're securing into a small window. So I want to start to secure a little bit into what we can do with range and start to play with that a little bit and expand that out. So we can look at another person's view and be able to say, I don't agree with them but I see the potential for them in it. But we could have a conversation with that. Uh, it just, it, it's so amazing. I had somebody call me and say, I want, do you still do healings? I said, I'm not sure I ever did a healing, but you have, like to have a conversation. Well, well, I'll see if I can discover by relating to you where you get lost in the idea of you. So if you want to call that a healing, that's okay, right? Whatever. I used to have a healing programs because everybody was clamoring for, oh, we should do healing programs, right? 
they call me up and feel better and they call that a healing. So I should teach them whatever I do. So I put together a program and they call it a healing program and I teach them. So what were we doing? We were just learning to relate a little better, right? Isn't that what we're doing? I look at you and I say, oh, I, I don't like the fact that you've got bumps all over your head or, or you wear weird clothes or you dye your hair orange or whatever. I could then polarize and say, you can't come in my building because I don't like the way you look. Or I could turn around and say, come on in. Come on in, let's take a look. I'm really curious to see why you want to dye your hair orange, right? Or you'd want to wear a Mickey Mouse hat everywhere you go, right? That's okay, I'll take a look at that. Do you understand that expands my range? Not that I wanna do it, but at least when my range is expanded, all these people then might have some resource there, something available to look at. Uh, I did meet a lady that wore her Mickey Mouse ears. She went to Disneyland one day a week for her years, had a little costume and everything she wore. So most certainly it's a kind of a pseudo personality. It's much better than being a serial killer, right? So uh, I have talked to a few serial killers. They're really not much fun to talk to, but conversation wise, it's, you know, kind of leaves you with dreams and all kinds of other stuff that, I don't know, it, I got tired of doing that. Now I could talk to someone who goes to Disneyland once a week and, and is wondering why people think that's weird. Uh, especially when, you know, you're an adult and you don't take any kids and you just go there and you run around. It's like, okay. So does that have some potential? Can I look at, I don't do that. So what, either I, I look at her and say, you're crazy, or I expand my range and see, how does that serve her? What does that do for her? How does that bring balance into her life? Because the system is forced balance by creation. So if she is going to Disneyland one day a week, what is she doing that for? What is that repairing? What is that, what is that opportunity for her producing in her world? She doesn't need judgment. She needs someone to look at that and be able to say, wow, you could probably obtain the same thing and, and save a lot of money because it costs a little bit to get into Disneyland. Uh, doing it a different sort of way. We could, we could diversify. We could look at other potential ways of doing things. It, isn't that what we learn for? We, I, I do something a certain way and somebody shows me an easier way and I'm, I'm relieved. It's like much easier, right? All right. So that's expanding range and finding pieces and range that may be more accommodating, work better for us, give us more answers, give us more reliability, right? All right, so we're in a state of change right now. Uh, everything is kind of chaotic, everything's up in the air. It's because of the fact, I believe, it's because of the fact that government who is supposed to be in charge, and they are in charge, we voted for them, they're doing whatever they are, I don't have any problem with anything, else, but they're trying to force balance it which is the whole nature of it. Medicine's trying to force balance it to save lives. It's the whole nature of it, right? I don't have any criticism with any of that. But I think when you're trying to force balance a system that's already in a balance, wow, that creates a little problem. I can remember when I was in gymnastics in college, we work walking on the balance beam and I was new at it. Uh, I start to lose my balance. I remember the coach used to always say, if you start to lose your balance, jump off. Just land on the floor, just drop. Drop. Don't try to save yourself. Because what we've discovered is that people that try to save it, especially as beginners, get hurt. Jump off. Easy. You know how to get off. Dismount. Come right off. So we need to let, we need to find that piece of balance on a balance beam so that it's easy. Just this little tiny bit of move gets you there. There was a famous guy that was walking a cable across the canyon. He did this all over the world, right? Between buildings and all kinds of stuff, he'd walk a cable and he had this long beam that he used to carry, right? And when he started to fall and did fall to his death, instead of grabbing for the cable with having a chance of maybe surviving, someone could rescue him, he instead grabbed for his pole. As he learned to feel and find the balance in a pole. And he couldn't switch at that moment 
to let the pole go and get the cable, wrap his arms and legs around the table and let somebody else come out and rescue him. Does that make sense? We, we don't always, if the range is not big enough, we, we miss the options. We become habitual and our habitual piece makes it safer for us, but no potential. And all it gets us to is a tombstone. Tombstone in the end for all of us. So the best you can do is have lots of fun, lots of range, lots of diversity between here and the tombstone. And I think that's the value in life, being able to expand this out. I don't know what we do with it. I'm not even sure there's gonna be a we afterwards, but I'm not all that sure that it's any more than just a game. Let's just play the game, right? Why try to overthink it? Let's just keep it simple because it's not a bad game, right? All right, so you get the nature of what I'm saying. This is what we settled on on the June blog, or I settled on and presented in the June blog. Uh, and in July, we'll start to see what we can do with delving into it a little more. So thank you very much. It's uh, any questions you have, go ahead and direct them to chris at wizardscatch.com, uh, W-I-Z-A-R-D-S-C-A-C-H-E. Uh, just send me an email. And, uh, and if you get to the wizcatch, dot com website my blog will be there and uh, uh, i appreciate most certainly your presence out there and listening and if you want to hit that paypal on the side and donate something to this whole process that's fine it's not essential but it's always appreciated so thank you very much and uh, we'll we'll talk a little more come july thanks